Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim tutorial. Today we're going to be learning how to get stone. First, you'll need to gather all of the necessary material. The materials you'll need are two sets of portals, so four portals, a carve or a longbow, I'm going to use a carve just because I prefer them, and a workbench. In addition to that, I'll use some really basic gear. We have upgraded troll leather, and my weapon is an abyssal razor. And we're using the antler pickaxes because these can be repaired at any workbench that is in shelter or covered. So now let's come over and grab our portal and all of our materials. In order to find the right kind of planes, you have to do a bit of searching. I'm gonna try and go further away from the center to find these planes. So you could go south, north, east, or west. What I recommend is that you go with the direction the wind can roll with it and have your portal stuff with you. That way if the wind changes course drastically, you have everything you need to just pop back to your base, okay? So let's get to it. Let's jump in our ship and start sailing. Now I've skipped ahead time a bit and I'm further south. There is a lot of ocean over here though, so haven't found any planes yet. Keep an eye on the horizon and see how many of these stone pillars there are. You can see over here, off in the distance, there is one stone spire. But it's kind of far away from the water and honestly, you can find better. So we're looking for a cluster of them at a minimum around three in the same area. And we've come up on two land masses. There seems to be a mountain over to the left and some swamp stuff to the right. Yeah, so far it looks like we've gotten kind of screwed. That little sliver of swamp has turned into a larger swamp. But it looks like there's some planes off in the distance over there. Now, here's the planes, but be really careful when you're here because there's these mosquito and they just fly at you and they can kill you even if you're in one of these boats and see what's happening here that's why i like the car because <laughs> the coastline changes so much and that's uh i'm i'm way too close you see that thing oh we don't want to get near near the coast like this so, so this is a much better distance much more realistic to stay about this far away from the coast you can see that these islands can still screw you over but you'll probably be safe. And as long as the wind is reasonably out your back, then you'll be able to outrun the mosquitoes. Now, I've continued around, and it looks like there's a tiny slip of meadow right there, which could be useful. But there's one stone pillar over there, because usually the stone pillars are sort of in groups, so if you see one, there's probably some other ones nearby. Now, continuing along the coast, there's sort of an island over here, but I can't really go down the river because it's against the wind, and you really don't want to travel unless you can have the wind sort of at your back. That way you can stay alive when a death mosquito spots you. Well, at first I thought I was cursed because I got to this point and then the wind changed direction, but I can actually see a pillar off in the distance we just need to be able to get over there. You see it? It looks like this one is just a lone pillar. And at this point, I decided to turn around because I have gotten a little bit further than I want to. I don't want to keep going because this area will just be kind of ashlands and too many mistlands. And we're trying to stay in sort of this, this colored band here. So I'm going to actually keep going and just go with the wind and <laughs> hope I find one of these pillar lands that I've been talking about. Well, this looks more promising. You can see up over on the ridge there, there's one, two, three, and then that pillar right there. But here we go. I'm going to land right here and hope for the best. I just ate a bunch of food. Now we're looking for the mosquito. See, got my dagger. Whoa! Oh. He hit me, but I got enough food, and I just killed him with my dagger. 
I like the daggers a lot because you don't have to pay attention as much. With the dagger, it can be level one, as you just saw, and you just kind of hold it down. And as long as you can absorb one hit from the mosquito, then you're gonna live, okay? Now let's grab this portal and we're gonna name it Stone. Uh, this portal is really, really vulnerable right now. It's just here in the middle of the plains. There's nothing blocking line of sight. So this is very temporary. All right, so I'm back now. I got a hundred wood, which should be good. And we're going to just do some really basic line of sight covering here with our portal. Boom, see, easy peasy. Now we'll get rid of this workbench, our portal's set up, it's safe from line of sight, from goblins and all of this, so even if an enemy is nearby, they're going to be attracted to the boat, and they might destroy the boat, but they're going to ignore the portal because they can't see it. Now we're ready to scout out the area. Before we start mining any stone, we need to kind of know what we're dealing with. So I'm going to be running around, and I still have this other portal stuff with me, but I don't actually want that. Um, because I might die doing this. And I'll put all of these extra materials for the second portal. Ready to start scouting. We're going to look for these pillars. Go to the base. Or as close to the base as we can get. And then kind of look around it a little bit. Alright. Looks like there's another pillar right here. So let's keep an eye out. Um, this has been abnormally smooth here. Ah, there we go. There's some trouble. <laughs> the whole goblin base, right? So I'm not going to go over there. I'm just going to kind of guess. Oh, no! Ah, okay. So you see what just happened? That's going to get you killed. I'm fighting on a, a, a little ledge here, and you don't want to do that. You want to be flat. So always land uh, up on something, and then you'll be fine. Well, now that we've done our basic scouting, it's time for us to return back over here. So it looks yeah. like I'm lucky and I've just aggroed one growth, which is a perfect opportunity for me to teach you about avoiding these growths. Once you get close, they're going to spew. See that? As long as you run sideways, just like I am, that attack will basically never hit you. Obviously, this gets more complicated when there's two or three, which is pretty typical. On the way back, I aggroed another Deathskito, surprisingly. And this time, the elevation actually helped me because he missed. Ha! Sucker! Here we go. We're back at our landing site. And because I was a fool earlier and I didn't mark it, I'm going to mark it here. Always mark your boats or portals, otherwise you spend way too much time trying to find them. At least if you're me. Whoa, what's that? I think there's another... That looks like another thing over there. Oh, cool. We're going to focus on this first pillar, because it's a perfect illustration of the concept. We're going to start mining our first pillar. Take the hoe. You don't have to bring the hoe, but it helps make a smooth area for the workbench. Okay, we have our workbench. Now we built and made some noise. It's good to check, see if enemies see you, and you can do that by crouching. No one saw me, so I'm moving on. And once you've kind of mined one chunk or hit it three or four times, you really need to check and see what you've aggroed. As I mentioned, sometimes you can aggro a hole. <laughs> goblin army, right? And it looks like I aggroed something. Oh, there he is. I saw him. It's a goblin. I see you, buddy. All right. Luckily, he's not a starred creature. Make sure you find a little flat area. See, here's our little flat area. That's our friend. Here we go. I'm gonna bait our attack from our flat place. Now, as you mine, it's useful to take your hoe and kind of level the ground a bit. This will help you find the edges. So, I've noticed something. I'm mining, but uh, off in the distance over there, you see that? That's a mosquito, and that's a goblin coming over here. Come on, buddy. There we go. Nice. Oh, abyssal dagger. I love it. Nice, look at this. We're getting close. 
Ah, there we go. That was the moment. You saw that lag? That's exactly what happens. And then look at all this glorious stone. And... Looks like we get around 400 stone, right? And that is how you mine a standard pillar. The standard pillars are much easier to mine if you have a higher mining level or you have better equipment. It can actually be quite fast once you have endgame gear. You can do this kind of thing in as little as five or six minutes because you don't have to protect yourself as much. Now I'll show you what it takes to actually get the pillars that are near obstacles such as a goblin base or a slime pit or these kind of things. These pillars are going to be more difficult but it's a really fun process that gives you a bunch of stone that you can use to build. We are here at the two sort of trap pillars, right? These look really enticing. They're right next to each other. This one's kind of short, but that's okay. But they're actually next to this huge fueling base. Ah, oh, these death mosquitoes, right? And that's gnarly. So what we're going to do is go to this one over here. Because this looks much more reasonable. Let's establish our portal before things get too gritty, let's say. Because uh, I have a feeling we'll aggro stuff close to us. So I'll place the portal kind of over there. kind of cutting two tunnels through in like a cross because then you get these four kind of corners and that makes it easier to just tell where the rest of the pillar is especially if you use the hoe earlier to outline the pillar as you're doing this there are going to be things that spawn and sometimes you have to be really careful like anytime you find a starred enemy that's bad news like all right looks like Finally whittled him down enough, so I'm gonna go for it. There we go. Now, at this point, usually, you get a last hit on it, and that takes away the support, and it's sort of floating. And then after that, you just need to destroy one more part, and then the whole thing will crush. But, oh! We got lucky there. The whole thing just collapsed. Let's see. Oh, no! Oh, that's really bad. See how... I'm tarred now. If there's more than one of these, I'm gonna die. But if there's only this guy right here, I might survive. It looks like there's only this guy, so we're okay. Lucky day. Just gotta wait in between his attacks and then go in and run away. <laughs> as long as you move side to side, then these guys won't kill you. There we go. I'm actually surprised we didn't aggro more of them because there's a whole pit of Here we go. After a solid rest, we're ready to tackle the two spires where the goblin camp is. There's an item that is incredibly useful for that, that you can make with this kind of gear. You'll need leather scraps, ooze, and resin. We're going to make these ooze bombs, and I'm going to show you just how crazy strong these things are. When you use we're going to do some hit and run stuff. What we're trying to find here are a group of enemies that we can aggro and then sort of bring to a sort of flat area. The best way I've found to do it is actually to just find one goblin that you can shoot and then try and shoot him. And if you hit him, you hit him. If you don't, you don't. Whatever it is, just run away and then run up to the fighting spot. These hills are really useful because they help you break line of sight, and you can use that to kind of single them out. We're going to kind of try and get this fueling after he attacks us. There we go. But let's see. It looks like these ones are staying together. So this is going to be our test of our bombs. We're fighting these three guys. So I'm going to stop running around and narrating and use these bombs. I'm going to equip them in between the ranged attacks. Wait for his next one. And then try and sort of trap them in this area. This bomb works by making a ground area poisonous. 
So it's not like an explosive blast or something like that. You really have to sort of get them to run into it. See how this one, he's running into it, and now he's getting hurt. And once they run into it once, then they'll be poisoned for a short length of time. So it's not actually that advantageous to use a whole... Oh, he's going to hit me. Oh, I was blocking. I was lucky. But as you can see, the poison bombs are really, really useful. So we're just going to keep doing this until we whittle that fueling camp down to nothing. Oh, and look at this happy surprise. These are the two pillars I originally saw. But there's actually another one right there, also in close proximity of this base. Now, as you saw earlier, those bombs worked really well, but there's two berserkers in this camp. So I have to sort of conserve the bombs for the berserkers, because I don't really have a good way to kill them. Do this, you sort of just shoot one, and then run back, and by the time you're away, then the enemies sort of start slowly going back to the base. So you can use that to sort of separate the stronger monsters, like this berserker here, from his friends. And he's going to do these really telegraphed attacks. And when he does that, I'm just going to put the poison bomb on the ground. Because it's really easy to keep him in the same spot, right? <laughs> Classic. I'm out of arrows, so i got to improvise. See, I'm just going to waste one of these bombs because I'm probably going to die if I try and kill him. Here we go, and boom! Yeah, we got him! So now I just got to rinse and repeat that process. Time to plan the next angle of attack here. Looks like there's still one more berserker there. And then there's a group. Here, I was able to restock on some fire arrows so I can take out this last fueling berserker. I'm just sort of going to combine shooting him with arrows and the poison seems to work pretty well. Usually if you can get them to walk into the poison twice, that seems to be sort of the maximum amount of damage you can do to each one. So he's in the poison. He's walked in once. Oh, oh, I just aggroed another goblin. I have to be careful. I'm going to switch my priority to fighting the goblin. Whoa, now there's a bunch. Okay, 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 here we go. This is the moment where these things shine. Now, I'm going to hope for the best. Try and get them to walk through that spot there. It helps to have the knife, as you can see. I think I'll just use one more of these, try and get both these guys. There we go. All right, so it looks like we've really thinned this place down. There's a shaman over there. There's some guys, goblins in this tower here, but the goblins can't get out of the tower, so they're probably fine. I think the only thing we need to worry about now is this last goblin right over there. So let's take care of him. Or them, I guess. He attacks, and then I'm just attacking once, maybe twice, depending on how big the window is. There we go, I can get this one. There we go. And now, make sure I didn't aggro anything else. I'm really vulnerable, so I'm going to go back and rest up. And then we'll see how much I got from mining all three of these towers. There we go, finally. Oh, that one was satisfying. This pillar is one of the pillars that intersects with a rock. So you have to make sure that you chip away at the rock. It actually takes a bit longer when this happens. And here we have our final pillar. Hopefully it'll be easier than the last one. Oh, that was so smooth. Oh, I'm glad the final one worked out so well. Easy peasy. You can see that pretty looking village off in the distance. 
All right, here we are. We have our hole. So we are looking at piles of 50 stone. At the end of the day, each spire gave us almost exactly 400 stone. I hope that you enjoyed this farming method. I had a bunch of fun, and this can be a great adventure to have with your buddies. If you want to support me or my work, then please check out my tutorial all about setting up a dedicated server. If you use the affiliate link in this video, then I'll get a kickback from that, and that helps me make more of these videos. You can also subscribe to this channel for new Valheim videos once every five days. If you got any ideas or anything you want me to make a video about, then please comment below. I have a list of a bunch of different video ideas, and I'm always adding more stuff to it. I love making Valheim videos. It's just my favorite way to play the game. So I'll bid the adieu. Have a great day, and I hope you enjoyed. Ciao!